for real and stay flipping keys no way eating good i got a lot on my plate but this is what i wanted so i can't complain the minority reports podcast where we keep it real estate and entrepreneurship education for the minority of three percent action takers here's your host billy the kid and co-host dan delgado Whoa, that, that just uh, bring down the levels on the mic here. <laughs> you just motivated me, bro. <laughs> he said, You need to practice your horn. I'm like, You know what? I'm going to bring it out today. Shit, if you're not awake, you're up now. <laughs> Damn. That did wake me up. <laughs> How you doing, man? Good, man. Well, I'm healing, dude. Everybody at home was sick for a while. so Yeah, was... yeah. Well, what was going on then? I don't know. It was like a stomach flu going on. Like everybody's like, Oh, yeah, it's going around. And so. Definitely hit us, hit the the baby first. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I got... And you, you've been busy too, huh? Yeah, we got another one on the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, April. April, we have another one on the hit way. COVID. Another COVID deadline. COVID baby. <laughs> yeah, we got uh, another boy coming. Yeah, so, congrats, man. Thanks, That's man. That's awesome. But yeah, and like I said, like everyone was kind of sick at home, but we're all over it now. It's just, it's been a rough few weeks. Yeah, yeah. But what about you guys? Good, good. Busy, busy. Um, Jet setting, right? You just got back from California? Yeah, yeah. We, we went to Cali, some family out there, uh, wedding, and went to the game for Vegas. That was, it was whack. They, they keep losing, whatever. The experience was fun, but. <laughs> did, he, did you guys go to the Crawford fight? Yeah, that was fun too. Yep, yep. But other than that. Uh, did he play your song? No, he didn't. Oh, that <laughs> that, dude, and we barely made it too because really? we flew in kind of late. So uh, we barely, literally, we walked in, grabbed our beer, and they were announcing him about to walk out. Really? So, but it was fun. It was good. Have you good ever been time. to a pro boxing match? Uh, here in Lincoln and in Omaha for him. No, that's not right. But I'm just saying, like a it, like a Vegas. Yeah, no, that style, was a, yeah. yeah first time ever Vegas man. That that was good. That was good times awesome. for sure. It's. it's crazy watching it at home you know i grew up watching fights right. so going to that was pretty cool and especially somebody from nebraska so yeah that was that was fun got the podcast too the I was, I was like i was gonna i was like man <laughs> like uh we gotta we gotta talk about that yeah, uh, yeah. what that, episode is it 590 uh, 542 542 yeah. yeah for those of you yeah. who don't know if you listen to us and i assume you listen to bigger pockets but uh yeah Billy the Kid was on Bigger Pockets. I was, man. How was that experience, man? <laughs> it was fun. It was good. It was good. Uh, the I guess the some something happened with the camera. Uh, yeah. We went to dinner that night. We we had a little surprise that oh, my that's wife right. put together with you guys and uh, a couple of my friends, family, and uh, I remember leaving the my part loading. And so I don't know if that had anything to do with it, but I had one of my buddies messaged me. He's like, you need to switch to Allo, which yeah. is one of the better providers. I'm like, oh, I already right. have Allo. It's not that. But other than that, no. That is I, weird. I kind of thought, because like, living in town, like we had, I mean, living on the country, we got, it, I'm lucky if we get 12 megs of speed. Yeah. So like if I was to be on a podcast like that, I'd have to do it from like work or something because yeah. my speed's too slow. So I'm really surprised that you had issues. Yeah, yeah. No. Exactly. you live in town. So. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'm happy that the vocals were fine. They were yeah, able to yeah. put the show together. But How's it was the, fun, man. I, I've had a lot of people reach out to me. Um, it, like literally, I lost count. Like I, I, I was texting really? you a little bit about it, but uh, lost count. I have a few lunches that I'm doing next week with <laughs> even lo like local people that I never even heard of, which shout out to them because it's nice to meet new people through that. You and know? then but, um, you're, you're speaking at the Omaha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that'll be January 26th, yeah. which is my birthday week. So I heard you hired an awesome camera guy to... To film for I am. Them. I am. <laughs> I heard you're paying him like a thousand dollars for the night, man. That's awesome. No, Good a little you. more, man. A little more. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. But, man. Congrats. That's, you know, talk about traction, man. Like, yeah, so you it's got, crazy. Yeah. You got the book. Yeah. How's the book doing? The book is doing great, too. Uh, it, it's crazy because even on the general uh, self help category, I think, it, and it's nothing like to, to most people, it might not be much, but I made it like top 1,000. Yeah. Uh, but that's in general. How about and you're talking like, like five, 10 million books. I was like, Amazon sells a lot of books. Yeah. Like, that's awesome. <laughs> like in self help. So that, that was pretty cool. I, can, I think that's the lowest I peaked. Um, so that's doing good. And uh, anybody that wants it, uh, I have different options. You can order on Amazon now. It comes out January 3rd. Um, otherwise, go, go to my site, billythekid.com, and you can grab an autographed copy. I have two options. Option one will be the. Uh, just the book itself autograph and then option two will be the book plus PDF and you get the audio version, 
which uh, I'm on chapter nine right now. That's it's harder than it looks, man. Oh no, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I, the, I heard a little bit, and, I, yeah. and I, he's like, I, you, you know, you did some interesting stuff with the audiobook. I did, and I was like, at first, I was like, I don't know how I feel about it, but then I'm like, okay, I get it. Like, and it makes sense. Like, you being you, obviously, you're, you're just gonna do it different. So that's gonna. I mean, I think I, I, I like gonna it. do the regular. No. Yeah, no, uh, I mean, that's actually, fine. yeah. So the the audio version, I'm doing more like a preaching. Uh, and I think a lot of it no, comes don't, from... Don't give too much away. I, I won't. You're right. You're right. I won't. Once it's out. Uh, but I think it's the way that I've listened to audiobooks myself. I kind of basically in my but, head... But you also project. Like your voice projects a lot. Like yeah. I, when you were on Bigger Pockets, yeah, I was like, yeah. this fucking guy like yelling at them? Like, yeah, can you doing? calm down? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like take it easy. No, I mean, I just think to, to, for you, it's like you're, you're passionate about what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. And so that really does come through on the audiobook. So although it was a little kind of tough to get used to like after like 10 seconds i'm like okay like this does make sense and yeah. so it's yeah, yeah yeah no yeah and I, actually if you got time after the podcast i'll probably I show I you no time. you're like i have no time <laughs> i have a baby <laughs> yeah, on the way yeah, yeah. <laughs> gotta make that next baby <laughs> twins <laughs> oh god no, congrats that's, that's but yeah I'll, I'll show you a little peek so you can tell me what you think after but All right. uh i got book of the week huh let me pull up as he pulls out YouTube to, to find <laughs> top a, a 100 best books or top sellers. <laughs> Actually, I'm excited for my next for the book that I have next. Yeah, yeah. I just read it and I'm like, damn, this is good. Yeah, I, I've sent you a couple, too. So mm -hmm. hopefully you grab some some of the, the ones that I've no, sent not you. the ones that you sent me. Yet. No, you need they're, to get to them. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I do have them on my Audible, my uh, deal to listen to next. Um, I'll go with one that uh, it, it's pretty repetitive with the. Um, ideas it's atomic habits i just bought that book you did yeah i haven't uh, read it it's like on my shelf but i it's good it's good yeah. uh and it, somebody that hasn't read something similar to that will enjoy i enjoyed it too don't get me wrong but uh, it's the same ideas um so basically the compound idea and, and i don't know if you remember the compound effect was mm -hmm. one of the books we had a few episodes back um but basically it's that same idea uh basically our one percent improvements in behavior in behavior that over time compound into full-blown behavior change and positive habits. And uh, I'll summarize, they talk about four stages of to habit forming. And uh, so I'll go over those four real quick. Uh, the cue is the element that triggers the brain to notice an opportunity for a reward or pleasure. A cue can be a smell, a sound, an event, an interaction or anything else that triggers a desire. This desire is known as the craving. And then that's the next one, which is the craving. That's the emotional relevance attached to a certain cue. When you notice the cue, uh, the brain anticipates an opportunity for a change in your physical or emotional state. You crave the satisfaction that change will elicit. And this craving is what prompts you to act. Um, and then the third one is the response. That's the actual behavior or habit performed to elicit the change you desire. Your brain prompts you to take a certain action it believes will create the feeling or satisfaction you want. And then the last one, and I did take some notes. <laughs> the, He's the, reading like the back, the back <laughs> cover right now. He never read the this back book. cover of the book. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then the last one is the reward, uh, which is the satisfaction gained from the action taken. Uh, you have successfully satisfied your craving and changed your physical or emotional state. Uh, the brain builds a pathway from the cue to the state of pleasure. Every time you're experience, you experience the same cue, the brain will be triggered to desire that pleasure again. You will be prompted to perform the same action, thereby creating a habit. And so that's how you create the habit. So yeah, Atomic Habits, check it out. Uh, like I said, it's a great book. Uh, I did the auto, uh, the auto version. <laughs> the auto, because <laughs> <book. laughs> you listen to it in your car. <laughs> so who do we have today, man? I'm excited today, for the guest today. We have... Let's bring him in. No, no, real quick. No, we have, uh, we have Tucker. <laughs> Let's bring him in. Woo! <laughs> this guy. I don't know. That was a remix. <laughs> that, that took too long. Huh? Sorry. Well, before, before I was uh, rudely interrupted. <laughs> I was, was going to tell everyone. <laughs> interrupted with the show. We, we've got we've got Tucker Pinion on today. I think uh, you probably are going to hold the record for like the youngest. Well, youngest really? for sure. And then there's a lot of records he's gonna yeah hold. <laughs> yeah you know, let's just get into it just yeah, yeah. go ahead Billy <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> no I, I'm excited uh real quick before we jump in uh where are we at man if you can let us know and let us know who you are and where are we at right now yeah so my name's Tucker Pinion I'm from here in Lincoln uh and my dad had rental properties growing up and then 
I just wanted to start getting into the flipping game. So uh, I worked construction about a year and then I uh, just started to get into the wholesaling, flipping, wholesaling part of it about seven months ago. And uh, I'm on deal number 11 now. So, man, so, so many, yeah. Yeah. so many things to take on there. For sure. <laughs> but yeah, well, I always like to take it back. Uh, basically, if you could tell us where were you born or if you're from Lincoln, uh, just your yeah. ba your back end of your story, basically. Yeah, I was actually born in Overland Park, Kansas. Uh, and then uh, for my parents for work, and then they moved to Lincoln, Nebraska uh, for work again. So uh, I've been here since I was three, ever since then. And then, like I said, my dad was in real estate since I was pretty young. So I grew up doing like the lawn care, snow removal, maintenance on those properties. And then, uh, so I always, like my dad gave me the book, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, when I was like 16. Uh, so I read that. And then as, as I always knew, I was like, I want to do this. I so just, when you were six, sorry, when, yeah, when you no, were I 16, uh, and, and I mean, if, if you could say, I mean, it's only been three years, uh, <laughs> I was going to say, if you could remember, um, but what was that like? Were you one of those where was, were you like, okay, let me check it out. Or were you a teen that was kind of like, ah, I'll, I guess I'll try it out. Or No, I was, I was, after I read that, I was like, I want to do this forever. I just didn't know how to do it at that time. And so learning how to do it because I didn't have uh, because I had very little money and I thought the only way to get into real estate was save up the 20% down payment mm -hmm. and that, cause that's how my dad had always done it. And then once I learned kind of, you don't need your own money. Uh, Amen. that's, that's when I started getting into it like a lot. So <laughs> this guy right next yeah. to you, <laughs> Honestly, you know, if I ever wrote a book on real estate, I think it'd be on like, and I'm sure there are plenty of them out there. Like, yeah, that, that, yeah, I can definitely see you crushing that book. Um, on, on people like, always talk about that. Money. Like every time we do something like that, I'm there people are like, oh yeah, you do OPM. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, no, for that. That. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you're the bandit of OPM and Lincoln. Um, but, uh, real quick with, so with your dad doing real estate, what was the teachings like at home? Uh, like, and, and let's take it way before you even thought about doing it yourself. Uh, if, if he took it to do lawn mowing or whatever else to go help him, uh, what was, I'm assuming he was teaching you at that point. Yeah. Some pointers. What were some of the stuff you'd learned throughout? Yeah. Outside of just having other investments outside of your 401k uh, with your W2, that's kind of how he, he always said, you know, have these other investments through real estate, you know, it's a really good way to get, get in and just build wealth that way. So uh, that's kind of what he taught me. And he, he wasn't too savvy on the maintenance side of it. So I kind of learned that part and I took on uh, that part of it myself, uh, the maintenance side of it. So, so did he hire most of his maintenance out then? And, uh... Uh, yeah. So he hired a lot of it out. Now he has a management company that does it all, but up until I was like 17, 18, uh, I was, how many doors did he, accumulate uh so he mostly had single families forever and then when i was like 11 he got his first sixplex and then he got uh sixplexes after that so now he has four sixplexes right now so and then i'm a partner with him uh i went to college in peru state uh so I, i'm a partner with him and my brother and some properties down there and in auburn it's like 10 minute drive from peru so uh, what did you go to school for uh business management yeah. <clears throat> do, you, do you think it's, has it been helpful in your transition into flipping? Uh, not really. I've learned pretty much everything <laughs> on my own. I was, that's so, what I was looking for because yeah. I went to school same. for the same thing and I was like, it, you know, I guess it helps you understand P&L statements and mm -hmm. the, the finance side of things. But yeah. I mean, you can learn that on YouTube. So yeah, it's just kinda... no, yeah, the self-development I've learned more in business in the last six months than I did. I was there for like two years. So yeah. Um, yeah. Is that, would you say you regret going to school? Uh, no, I met my wife there, so I wouldn't say oh, that. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that, was, that made it worth yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. No. Good and, great answer, man. Yeah. Great answer. Yeah. Yeah. Came quick with that one. Yeah. Yeah. We were actually talking about your wife a little bit before when we started. Um, mm -hmm. you said she's still in school right now. Yeah. But since you started your stuff, how's that going? Yeah. She's like, I want to do what you do full time. She wants to do the design part and she wants to do that full time, but she's almost done. I was like, just finish it out. And then we can decide we can just do this full time. Uh, so yeah, she's in for like psychology and she wanted to be, uh, uh, like a s school psychologist. Mm -hmm. Um, so she was going for that. And then I think, uh, she still wants to do some volunteering on the side with that. She just got done with an internship at the child advocacy center. Mm -hmm. 
So she still kind of enjoys that stuff. But what did she think when you first got into it? Did she have any kind of exposure before you got into it? Um, well, when we were dating, I like, I think one of our first dates, I took her through the property I had in Peru that I was rehabbing. That was your first date? Uh, yeah. Like wow. after, <laughs> That's awesome. yeah, after, the, after the movies. Yeah. I, she's like, I was like, yeah, I have a house down here. And she's like, yeah, let's check it out. So I took her through. That's it. pretty trustworthy of her. Like, to just like just go to a yeah. random because it could have been a creepy abandoned <laughs> yeah. house. You know, it was. Like, it was a creepy house. Well, no, I'm saying like that's, that's pretty. Yeah, it worked out obviously. Yeah. But, no. That's <laughs> true. That is true. Things to teach your daughters. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that that's awesome, man. That, I love it. Um, so you so you haven't been with her too long then. Um, we met my first semester of college, which was so right after high school. Though I. Uh, I joined the Air National Guard, so I went to basic training and all that training for like six months. So I missed my first semester of college. So I started and I played basketball Peru State. My started my second semester of my freshman year. So we met there uh, at that time, and then um, we were dating probably fourteen months, and then we got married, moved back here, and I started working construction, and then now we're doing this. So yeah, and so would you say because it sounds like you definitely got more experience with your dad, with the construction. I mean, can you elaborate a little bit more on that, uh, on how important the experience of hands-on it is mm -hmm. better than actually going to school and reading books that you probably don't want to yeah. read? Yeah, <laughs> I left school to start construction because I wanted to flip houses. I wanted to learn how houses were built, how, they, how things work together. So that hands-on experience definitely helped me to where I am right now because I don't, I don't know what I would have done if I, if I hadn't had that experience walking through houses, I wouldn't know <clears> how to <throat> estimate rehab costs and stuff. So that definitely gave me a head start uh, to where I, when I first started, I, I knew how to, about how much things were going to cost and how the rehab was going to go and stuff like that. So I love that, um, Tucker, because, and, and I'll plug my book in because I, I it, of course, <laughs> <laughs> well, no, it just made me think <laughs> it's on Amazon right now. Okay. No, um, it, it made me think of, um, uh, I wrote on the book how I used to work at the place that I worked at for 14 years. And I literally wrote on there that I wish two years into that I would have quit and gone work at a construction company, handyman business. And then maybe even after that at a property management place, mm -hmm. you just, you know, and, and anybody listening out there, if you guys are that young uh, to be able to do that, do it because you're going to look back and do that. And, and, and I feel like that's why it was important to touch on that. And, and I'm, I love hearing that you're so young and you've already done that. So mm -hmm. that just set you up in this early stages where you're going to do major. Th I mean, you're already doing major yeah. things. <laughs> like, it's crazy, but, uh, and, and it's more, this, your story that so far that, that we've gathered, I is telling that if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so, um, Okay, so let, let's continue on with the story. Uh, so you worked at a construct. So when, I mean, you said six months ago is when you, you got your first deal? Yeah, uh, about se six or seven months ago, yeah. Okay, and yeah. how did you find that deal? Um, direct mail, it came off direct mail. And uh, actually another wholesaler was involved in it. So he actually got it under contract and wholesaled it to me. Um, so that was a flip that I did. So real quick, you said, you know, your dad buy, he does buy and hold mm -hmm. and you're doing flip wholesale, wholetail. Yeah. How does he feel about what you're doing? Because obviously he has a different end goal than you do. Mm -hmm. Did he, I, I, did he like tell you you're being crazy or? Yeah. And when, I first, <laughs> when I first started sending out mailers, I was like, I was looking up how to, how to get in real estate with no money. I, I started sending out direct mail. He's like, what are you doing? You're going to lose all your money and stuff. Um, and then I kind of talked, I said, okay, that, that makes me want to do it anymore. So, uh, I did it and then I started getting these calls and he's like, Oh, I see it's working now. So now he's actually done a flip. <laughs> and so now he's getting into that side as he saw kind of what I was doing. So <laughs> the turn, the, how the tables have turned. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Yeah. That's awesome. And, and where did you learn the marketing aspect of it? YouTube. Yeah. I'll, I'll just you, actually you like, plug any channels. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, if you remember them. The, He's like, just look at look up look how up. to. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, wholesaling Inc. was a big yeah, like I podcast. One, yeah. yeah, I actually learned wholesaling when I was seventeen, in my senior year, but I didn't really take any action. And and then when I 
I wanted to get out of my construction job. That motivated me being in that job enough to like, uh, I want to be done with this. So, uh, yeah, I was up up late watching YouTube and learning learning all the marketing aspects of it. So, what are if you had to summarize, I don't know how many points, maybe the top five or the top 10 things you've learned. Um, Dude, Jesus, yeah, uh, whatever many, whether it's five <laughs> that's or 10. A, that's a handful. <laughs> yeah. Okay, yeah. 20, 20, t- no. Yeah. Uh, the, like the main things that come to your head uh, that you've learned. Yeah. So being consistent with your marketing, because I was kind of sending out here and there, and you just got to keep doing it and do a lot of it. And then you'll start to see the fruits of that. Uh, because at at the beginning, you know, I was, I was sending some out and then I wouldn't see anything. And once I figured out, oh, I got to do a lot of this and I got to be consistent and I got to be constantly talking to homeowners. Um, that's when I, uh, it kind of took off, I guess. So definitely staying consistent is probably the number one thing. And then, um, behind that, it's just hard work, I guess. Does, um, do you obviously being consistent is important uh do you have like a certain rotation or time frames or like okay i'll send out a, a mailer and if i don't hear from them i'll try to call them and if i call them I'll like how do you manage your i guess your crm do you yeah. have anything like that yeah there? so i use a crm it's called resimply i send out uh like i really just hit the same list over and over and over <clears throat> and then um it's really just a timing thing when they're ready to sell they'll they'll call you or, or when they're ready to yell at you, they'll call you. <laughs> uh, so I've had a lot of that as well. So, um, yeah, it's just a lot of, a lot of consistency with that. So I, I, I mail like a lot of vacants, um, with a uh, list that are on two or more. So that'd be like stacked properties. Um, and then obviously all the foreclosures and, and, uh, vexations and stuff like that. And I just, yeah, I can stay consistent with it. So does um uh what does like your sales approach, I guess, look like? So when you when you you know you you get a call and it's something mm-hmm. that's promising, and you go walk through the house, do you are you doing your own um like offers? I mean I imagine you yeah. are at this point. Yeah, so, yeah. So I do everything, it's just me right now and my dad helps out because it I was stuffing letters, so he was helping out with mm-hmm. stuffing letters and folding letters. Uh, but yeah, I, I do everything myself. I take, and I think that helps a lot is I, I take my own phone calls because like 99% of the time, you know, my name's on the letter, they'll call <laughs> say, Hey, is this Tucker? And I'm like, yes, this is Tucker. Whereas other companies, they have like, maybe you call into a calling service and they're like, Oh, Tucker's out of the office. So having a live answer, I think that's helped me. Um, and then, yeah, I try to get, get make, if I can sense that they're motivated, I try to get in into the appointment as soon as possible. So, um, yeah, if I'm on the phone with them, I'm like, Hey, can we, can we meet right now? And you know, that, sometimes that happens, but. So what, when you say, if you get a sense that they're motivated, like what, what gives you that sense? Yeah. So there's probably four quali- qualifying factors, uh, condition timeline, uh, then their motivation and the price of the property. So if really, if you can hit two of those things while you're kind of qualifying and talking to them on the phone, um, it's probably a pretty motivated lead. And beyond that, uh, sometimes you can just hear the distress in their voice. Like sometimes, uh, some, something drastic may have just happened in their family and they're just like, I need to call, I need to get rid of this thing. So you can, you can kind of hear it in their voice and then I can kind of sense it that way. So, and you touched on it a little bit, but, uh, where do you find the leads? You said foreclosures and what else? Uh, yeah. So I pull all lists from prop stream and I, 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 Pull like a foreclosure list, um, v- vacants, uh, high equity, free and clear. So I, yeah, prop stream. And then I get some from the county as well. So like code violations has been a good one. Um, tax delinquency as well. So, and you know, what's crazy Tucker is that, uh, I would I don't know, I'll put a percentage, like 80% of the people that we talk to, you know, are saying that lately it's been more of the networking is how they find their deal. So I love that you're still using these systems and it's still working for you. So Mm -hmm. I definitely got to applaud you for that because most of the people we've talked to, uh, they're, you know, the bandit signs they are like, Oh, I don't even do those anymore. Mm -hmm. Um, but so how did you find that first deal then? Was it through that listing then? Yeah. Through the, uh, pulling that list and sending direct mail to it. And so 
I just started getting calls and that's how I got my first one. Uh, so. And what'd you do with that one? Uh, so that one, my first one was actually, there was me and another wholesaler. So uh, he actually got it under contract and then I wanted to flip it. So he wholesaled it to me. Um, Could yeah. you explain if anyone out there doesn't know what a wholesale is? Is that mostly what you're doing? Or? Um, I'm doing a combination of everything. I've probably done actually wholesaling the least amount. Because I think everybody knows what a flip is, mm -hmm. but I, I kind of find myself explaining it to a lot of people. Yeah. Can you explain what Yeah, so is? you get a property under contract and you're basically selling the contract. So you're assigning that, the rights to the property and the contract to uh, a buyer who wants to flip it or keep it as a rental or something. So. And then you don't have to have like a real estate license or anything for that? No, no. And then, so you just make a fee on top of that. You get the, you get it under contract for a certain price and then you... Uh, essentially just sell that contract for a wholesale fee so so how do you determine when you find a property if you're going to wholesale it if you're going to flip it or uh it really just depends how much i think i'm going to have into the property um i'm trying to stay more on the, the flips that are like 20 grand or less um so if it's a really big rehab i'll, I'll wholesale it um and then if if it's for wholesale if it's in pretty good condition i'll just throw it on the market and won't really touch it so so if someone were to, with the, well, the wholesale is basically like a wholesale, but you're actually, you're buying it, mm -hmm. closing on it, mm -hmm. and then you just put it on the, on the retail market. Yep. Uh, so when, when you do that, what is stopping that original homeowner from doing it themselves? Um, they just want to sell it quickly. So they just want to sell it as is. They don't want to clean anything or, and they just want their cash quick. So, so then you do some cleaning and yep. stuff, like just kind of spruce it up a little bit, but yep. you're not doing any rehab. No. You, Usually it's like five grand and under. Maybe you'll put new carpet in, but it's not nothing like knocking down walls like a, a flip or anything. So cool. That's awesome, man. That, that's that's great. Uh, so do you have? So you you said you had some rentals. How many rentals do you have right now? So I have twelve single family uh, that I'm partnered with my dad and my brother, and then I have one of my own here in Lincoln, and then another one under contract that we're gonna keep as a short term rental. So. Plus the flips that you've done, mm -hmm. yeah. Which so, is how many flips? Uh, uh, about ten. Yeah, ten. So then that those we just bought a ten property package deal as rental. So that was just one of the eleven deals. Wow. How did that Like, let's talk about that. How did you come across something like that? Uh, so I went to college in Peru State, and then we just found it in Auburn. It was on Zillow. So a landlord getting out of the game. Had like 10 properties and was it like in the description there was 10 properties or were you mm -hmm. just kind of asking probing questions and no it was in the description he was selling his whole portfolio and wow. so he's a master uh, he's a master <laughs> zillow purchaser <laughs> yeah. i've never ever been able to find something on no wow that's crazy never. yeah no zillow, gotta love zillow it, it's crazy shout out to zillow even though they're going to <laughs> no, some crazy, no, no, crazy no, no, no. <laughs> Hopefully they make it. I'm through, gonna retract but... that shout out. To Zillow. <laughs> You'll edit that part. <laughs> you know what? You know, no, nothing against Zillow, man. But like that damn Zestimate is like, <laughs> like uh, yeah. the damn time. And that's the thing. You, you learn though what not to use and what to use. You know, I'm like, I hate that Zestimate because I don't yeah. know how many times I have people like, well, ooh, well, Zestimate says, well, blah, blah. I'm like, well, Zestimate doesn't see this is a freaking hole in your ceiling. Yeah. 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 So like, yeah, well, yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. what's crazy is that they their map is actually very accurate too that's what sucks about it that you would think they would have good comps <laughs> nah, man, you know, the thing is like comps i don't think and the, the whole thing with them what is it, like fifty six thousand houses or whatever they're yeah. yeah. some crazy amount of houses that they're having to get rid of now at like a discount and there's other websites too that mm -hmm. basically copied them as soon as they and announced it and they're going down too yeah it's just i don't think comps like you have to have a person do that like it's just mm -hmm. It's not right. something it's not that a algorithm system. can do, you yeah. know, and it's just insane. So, you know, on one hand, like it sucks for them, but I think it's also helpful for people to see like, look, you can't yeah. just plug into an algorithm mm -hmm. and there's so many factors that go into it. So we're retracting that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the whole, the Sorry, whole so, piece. So you, these, so you got these 10 properties. Um, you said they're under contract right now? Uh, we closed on them October 29th. Okay. So. And were they already like people in there? Yep. All pack, all, uh, um, they were all full, yeah. And you're keeping everybody? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. And that's on top of what you already have, the the initial 12 that you've partnered with your dad? Oh, no, that's included. And that's included. Okay, mm -hmm. okay, awesome. That Man, 
how do you feel about investing outside then of, of Lincoln? Uh, how far is Peru from here? It's about an hour, hour 15. Okay. Just, Let, yeah. Let's talk about that because uh, I'm a big coward when it comes to that, even, mm-hmm. you know, Omaha, or, which the plan is to do it, mm-hmm. uh, you know, everywhere. And I think if the numbers work, I mean, you're looking at the big fishes out there. I mean, they're, these sharks are, you know, <laughs> yeah, <that's long laughs> investing from Texas to mm-hmm. Maine or, you know, Florida yeah. or whatever. So if you could touch on how that, how that works and what's the mindset behind that. Yeah. I was a little skeptical investing in smaller towns because Peru is pretty small town. Uh, but we got the house cause I was going to be living there and it was actually going to be cheaper to buy the house and rent out the rooms than, uh, live on, on campus living. So I, I went and did that and, uh, yeah, it's, the houses are so cheap <clears throat> and the cash flow is just, it's, it cash flows really well. So, um, now it's, it, it will be harder to liquidate the properties. So uh, it's harder to sell them just because there's not as many people, but I guess if we're planning on keeping them long term, that, right. that won't really matter. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. So, man, I love it. Love it. Love it. Um, so, because that, that was amazing. Just that whole, I mean, 10 houses in one. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Uh, but let, let's back up a little bit. Uh, so, with the first house that you got, then that was a flip, then the first one that you did? Uh, or did you end up keeping that one? Uh, we kept it. So, that was, uh, yeah, that was my first ever rental when I was 18. I just started going to Peru State. And, uh, 18, huh? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Man. Yeah. So <laughs> that's we, awesome. We got it, um, for like 19 grand next day, or we pay cash for it. Next day we go to the bank it appraises at 50. So we got 75% of that rehab, the whole thing. And then now it's a rental. So man, and you still have that one now. Huh? Yeah. W- what about the second deal after that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we got that one. It was a foreclosure uh, and it was like right across the street. Uh, from the the Bruce State campus, so uh, we we saw it coming up on auction. I went and like snooped in the windows. I was like, this this place is pretty nice. Go to the courthouse. Uh, they're having the auction, and we were the only one to show up. So got it for like <laughs> they're like thirty three grand. We're like okay, thirty three grand and one dollar, and then they're like, it's yours. So <laughs> yeah. the, the, I, I can't remember where I was. I was it was a podcast or something. Uh, where it was the same idea that uh, that was the only person that showed up. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you would, and and that's the thing. I mean, you showed up like, you know, that a lot of people, a lot of people even listening. I mean, that's the first step, right? Show Mm -hmm. up. And I mean, that right there paid off for you. It was was hard at first because uh, my dad was coming from Lincoln. So in in the courthouses in Auburn, it's like 10 minutes. So we go down there, they cancel it the first time and no one showed up, not even the auctioneer. Uh, the second one, they canceled again. They postponed it like four or five times, but we just kept having to have eyes on it constantly. And then when it was scheduled for a date, we would call them, say, hey, is this still on? And then they finally had it. So, And so young and doing big things, but, and you probably don't even have fear at this point, but what are like, what are some of the ways that you overcame fear being so young? Was, I mean, or did that even hit your mind? No. Yeah, I, I was... Uh, fearful at first, especially going on uh, appointments and talking to these sellers. I didn't really know what I was talking about, um, but it just takes getting out there. And after you do it once, you're like, oh, yeah, this is easier than I thought. Um, so it's just taking that first step because, uh, yeah, courage just isn't uh, it's not it's not not having fear. It's just doing it in spite of the fear. So that's what I try to do. All right. So you. um You've obviously got you obviously got a lot going on very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, you seem to have systems in place. You have parameters that you look at when you look at properties. Um, and I know YouTube was helpful with that, but and you know off camera we were talking a little bit about mentorship. Um, can you talk a little bit about uh, how that started, who it's with, and kind of what that involved, and how that's attributed to what you got going on now? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I was actually listening to a podcast and. Uh, cause there's coaches all over. You can get, um, the, the big gurus and stuff. And I heard someone say that you want to find someone in your local market, a mentor in your local market, cause they're going to know it best. And that's just going to be the most beneficial for you. Uh, so, uh, I, I have Josh Nix as my mentor and it's just been a real big part of my success. Uh, so I, I heard him actually, he posted and he said something about a mentorship and then, uh, 
I didn't say anything at the time. And then a couple months later, I asked him about it and he said, no, he's not doing that. And then like a couple weeks later, he's like, yeah, I'll open my mentorship up. So then I took advantage of that. And like I said, it's been integral part to how long ago did that start? Uh, about seven months ago. Yeah. So right when you really just kind of. Yeah. Off. So I was kind of doing some marketing. And then when I started working with him, I got my first deal in like three weeks, two or three weeks. Wow. So, so shout out the to power of that. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's awesome. Um, <laughs> Powerful. So are you, are you still mentoring men, his mentee, I guess? Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and does that work just like on like a six-month basis or just kind of just as you keep going, you just kind of... Yeah, so uh, we just meet weekly and it's just, uh, I guess, a monthly fee that I pay him. And and so just we meet we weekly, so... So I, I don't remember who I was talking. I was talking to someone about mentorship and I do remember them saying like, what, you're going to pay for it? And I'm like, to me, it's like a, of course I'm going to pay for it. Like, this is someone's time and expertise. Can you kind of speak to why mentorship is important and why it should be a paid type deal? Yeah, it should be paid just because that's going to make you want to do it that much more. Cause you're like, man, I, I'm paying for this. I got to make the most out of it. Uh, so, you know, you hear people paying thousands of dollars uh, for a, a mentorship and, and even if they don't even learn anything through that, just because they got, these thousands of dollars in credit cards, it forces them to be successful. So um, it's definitely pay, paying for a mentorship is really, I think, a good way to get started. Um, so, And we, we've been talking a lot about that lately. I mean, you listen to all these, uh, you know, not, but these big timers, I mean, that, that you would think you would hear all their billion dollar net worth right they don't need uh but they're still paying coaching and mentors mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. so if you could uh elaborate on that i mean just how important that is and and uh it without giving too much away like what are some of the keys that you've learned that you wouldn't have otherwise if you weren't if you weren't doing your mentorship yeah so <clears throat> it's pretty easy to learn on youtube the marketing stuff it's pretty you know, but the one thing that Josh has helped me is connecting everything together. Like, oh, you got to go in the house and this is what you look for. You take pictures, you write these things down and this is how you talk to them. And so that kind of part is helped to me because anyone can have a coaching program and say, you got to pull a list and, and do direct mail. But uh, these uh, big guru mentors, they're not going to go on your appointment with you and kind of walk you through the process. Uh, so just really connecting the dots because um, I, I kind of had the pieces and you just helped me put them together. Um, <clears throat> this is a little bit off topic of the mentorship, but when you go through a house, because I've heard it both ways, this is what I'm asking. When you go through a house and you know, okay, this could be a deal, do you make an offer right there? Because I've heard both ways. Some people will like, they don't want to waste time, so they'll bring, you know, a, a blank uh, purchase agreement with them. And then others are like, no, I'm going to wait. And it's like, how do you do that? Mm -hmm. So I, I always per uh, carry a purchase agreement in my, in my pickup because uh, you never know. And I, that's actually one of my first deals. I, I, I needed one and I didn't have one. No. Um, but uh, Bet you won't do that again. Oh, no. I, <laughs> I, yeah, I printed out like 200 and I'm like, I'm going to use all, every single one of these. <laughs> yeah. like that's, awesome. yeah. Like, yeah. That, that's actually probably a way to do like yeah. a goal setting. Like, yeah. actually, you know what? I might, I might do that myself <laughs> next, next year. I'll probably print out, you know, 10. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I just started printing them. I was like, oh, man, I ran out of paper. So. I just printed a ton, but no, back to, back to that. I, I, I kind of just gauge their motivation. So if I can tell they're kind of motivated, I always try to get the price out of them first. And if we're pretty close, I'll make them an offer. But if we're just way off base, I'll tell them, uh, I'm gonna have to go do some, some research on this one and, and then I'll call them maybe the next day. Um, but no, if we're, if I can gauge their motivation, see if they're kind of motivated and, and they give me the price and it's, sounds like pretty close then i'll, I'll kind of shoot him an offer there so so outside of the um, back to the mentorship um outside of when you said you had uh researched what type of you know what to look for in a mentor you know you said being local mm -hmm. um what is it that made josh stand out to you other than him offering and being available because there's not a ton of mentorship in lincoln i know mm -hmm. that that's actually at least like at that level uh, what, what, you know, what makes a good mentor and, and how does Josh fit into that? Yeah, I just saw what he was doing his experience in it. And he posts a lot about deals that he've done, he's done. So I knew he had the experience. So I just uh, knew that he was going to be good. And I saw that he's, he was genuine and 
and kind of the posts that he makes, you know, he sounds, seems like a personable guy. And so um, that really stuck out to me as well. So. Mm-hmm. so then for anyone out there that's kind of maybe considering it and uh, looking to maybe get a mentor, what, what would you tell them to look for? Uh, make sure that the person has done deals themselves. There's actually coaches out there and I uh, paid for some that I didn't really look to see how qualified they were. And so they're really good at selling you online. Oh, this course, you're going to get your first deal, this and that. And uh, so just seeing how many deals they've done. And so it's not really them interviewing you. You want to kind of interview your mentor. And so, um, yeah, just see if they have the experience themselves. Cool. Love that, man. Love it. Love it. Um, So I, I would like to touch a little bit more on, Kind of like, because it, it seems like you're kind of in between both worlds uh, of the flipping and, and uh, the rental, um, which, what, what's your, what are you thinking you're going to be doing from here on out or are you mixing both or what have you learned so far? Yeah. So I want to, obviously rentals long-term, um, but next year I really want to focus on increasing my active income. So I want to focus on flipping wholesaling and, and wholetailing mainly and then pick a few few deals out of that pile, you know, to, to keep as a rental. Um, because yeah, it's it's good for wealth building, uh, but if you can have 20 grand right away, you can just pour that back into marketing and get way more houses than if you, if you kept that one. So I'm gonna focus on maybe keeping one or two uh, next year, even in the next couple of years, and a couple of year maybe, and then just focus on the wholesaling and wholetailing and flipping side of it more. What's your favorite part about the flipping? Uh, just seeing something go from old to new. That's, I love seeing that. So that's me too. Like I, I try, you know, I wonder sometimes because I got into this for rentals and I got one <laughs> and just like stopped and then everything else has been flipped, you know? And so I'm just like, um, I don't know for me, it kind of, I, I kind of feel like it's the same thing. It's I, I'm a very like creative person. Mm-hmm. And so for me, it's almost like an art to just take this, you know, piece of crap property yeah. and just make it gorgeous, you know? And so I was just kind of curious because I think a lot of people, um, you know, if you ask them that question, I think they'd be like, oh, it's the money. It's always the money, you know? Mm-hmm. It's just like, yeah, it is a quick buck, but you get taxed the heaviest on it, as we talked about earlier. Yeah. But yeah, it's just, there's something about, maybe it's, is it maybe, I don't know, for, for me at least, is it like a sense of pride maybe that's mm-hmm. back in there? Like just showing that, you know, I did this. Yeah, definitely. I, I love seeing things go from old to new. And another another part I like is some of these people have lived in these houses for like 40 years. So I like seeing the history of the house and and talking to the homeowners and hearing their story. Uh, so I, I really like, you know, I've, I've brought some people that I bought their house. I brought them back through and they're just like, oh my gosh, this is awesome to see like if they've inherited the house, you know, see my parents' old house look like this now. So mm-hmm. it's like extreme home makeover. Yeah. Right yeah. They come back in and just like, yeah, yeah. That the yeah. flip I did last year, I they they they're the ones who called me that they wanted to see it. And they they were older. Uh they lived there for 40 years or something, you know, mm-hmm. the whole thing. But it's crazy to see their face when they yeah. see the, <laughs> the Definitely. and it's funny they were like oh, makes you want to buy it back. You know yeah. <laughs> hey it's for sale. Yeah. 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 What's your uh system designed uh or your your business designed is it are you doing a lot of the construction then uh, i did on the first one and i never want to do that again myself so i, I want to hire get to hiring and everything out so that's kind of what i'm going to focus on such a good lesson <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah 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 it's it, it's i think it's easy to get caught up in the yeah i wasted you know, so much time cheaper. yeah yeah um, no, no, that's a great i mean because i think with you i've been talking about uh kind of just like the mentality of yeah, you'll save a ton of money, obviously, if you mm-hmm. did it yourself. But, you know, what's your time worth at this point? At yeah. this level, you know, you're doing this yeah. much. Your time is worth a lot more than mm-hmm. doing a backsplash, you know? Yeah. So if um, you can, you know, one, it's going to be more money if you hire it out. But if you can do three or four at a time, you're going to make more money yep. than doing it. And, and it's funny uh, that when you call, so there was this house that, it's probably the worst one I've seen and, and it's sad because I'm like, all right, that has to be the worst thing I've seen. Like it mm-hmm. was a move out. It's one of those houses you buy that you you know that you would like to find the way it was found, but this was, the, these tenants lived there for a year. So it shouldn't mm-hmm. have been like that. Right. Uh, roaches, all, I mean, just mm-hmm. crazy. Um, 
but to kind of touch on what we were talking about, uh, uh, when you called me, I think it was like the next day after I got the keys back for the house, mm -hmm. we went through eviction and all that good stuff. Um, and when we were talking on the phone, I was telling you about it. I was like, man, yeah, I guess my guy said blah, 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 blah. And, uh, you asked me, you're like, well, have you been over there? I was like, no, I haven't. And, and it, it, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because it, it's hard to remove yourself from being the technician, like the, mm -hmm. you know, so I, I fought it hard and I didn't go in there for like three weeks. Um, so, you know, three weeks later when they had, I mean, we had like four or five trailers worth of trash. I mean, mm -hmm. my guy said that uh, when they walked in, it was up to their knee worth of like clothes oh, and just trash, yeah. like in the basement. One year. Yes. Oh, yes. Sad. Like it's sad kids. You know, that's probably mm -hmm. the saddest part, but, um, anyways, that call, man. And, and I've been meaning to tell you, so good thing we're on air because it, it kind of taps in into this. It, it made me realize that I'm like, okay, I, I guess I am fighting hard not to, right. <laughs> to get involved. And, mm -hmm. and so I think it's important to do that. And, and I love that you're so young and you're already doing that. You're already removing yourself, uh, from that. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm sure you've read E-Myth. I'm, mm. I'm assuming have you have you read that I'm book not yet? Right there, no. Man, I, I know you one. did. Yeah, uh, so it's crazy because uh, on the way to the airport and back, I started listening to it again, and it's funny because it was saved on my uh, on my books or whatever from I think last time I heard it was 2018 19. Mm. Um, so I played it on, and this time it made so much more sense. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. I remember listening to listening to it then, and it was like, oh okay, yeah, that makes sense, but now listen so it just shows you that uh you know when you're ready if that makes sense and it sounds mm -hmm. like you're already there at this age which right. is awesome not, not just at this age but at this stage in your career you know mm -hmm. that's you have such a huge advantage now doing that mm -hmm. and, and like i said like and i don't think there's anything wrong so i don't want like anyone listening to like oh right. I'm yeah, yeah. myself you know exactly. there is nothing wrong with it it's just a different approach and you know um with you having a, a mentorship uh, you know, I know Josh also does private money lending. Mm -hmm. So then that's also an advantage, you know, because you can utilize him for that portion of the project too. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not always possible for people to hire everything out right away. Um, it took me, what, like nine flips before I kind of like realized I got to stop doing that. And mm -hmm. so, and it's hard. It's, it hard. Is hard. it's hard. Yeah. It's hard to remove yourself. So kudos to you for that, man. Uh, but uh, so right now, the place that we're sitting here right now, what you, you said, you I saw the it's sign, ready. it's a flip, right? That yep. you did. Mm -hmm. and if you could give us the round on of how you found uh, the roundup of uh, roundup, you know what I mean? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, of how you found it, uh, the numbers involved, how, how you got it uh, fixed up and then what were the final numbers? Wait, before you say that, when is it close? Uh, next week, Friday. Okay, so we should publish this after that uh, yeah or that day <laughs> yeah maybe yeah we yeah. gotta be careful with that, that day but yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just try to be careful just because okay um you know we don't know if the sellers listen to yeah yeah, yeah true okay. yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. but, you but know, they know them. they know too though but yeah yeah so it was direct mail lead uh they called and they had inherited the property from like their aunt or something uh, and they were older and they were cleaning out the property and they just wanted it wanted to be done with it so uh, i bought it for 125 uh, put about 15 into it and then we're under contract for 180 and nine hundred dollars 180,900 so I hear 15,000 in 2020 you know end of 2021 yeah. and honestly to me it's just like how far does that get you right now yeah so I did a little bit on this but not a whole lot um, but this house is pretty pretty small so it took care solid of solid too yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, and it already had a lot of things. I mean, you don't have to do the windows. It was pretty much all cosmetic. So um, it took care of this one, but it, it won't get you very far on a bigger house and, and the large square footage. So what did you actually end up doing? I mean, it looks great. I just don't yeah. know like, yeah. what was here and what wasn't. Yeah, so we did new cabinets, new flooring, carpet, paint, and new vanity in the bathroom. Uh, we closed that. Actually, used to be a door, so we closed that off. Um, but, yeah, that's it. So... Yeah, that's very minor stuff. Mm -hmm. Fifteen thousand. You bought it for how much? One twenty-five. So you're into it for one forty. Mm -hmm. And how much did it close? Or is it closing for? 
180 and $900. Wow. That's an awesome return. So then, once you're wiped out or what, once you're done, like what are you walking away with after fees and everything? Uh, it's going to be like 28, I think. Man, that's then, awesome. Um, what's the time frame look like from when you bought it? Or for, actually, let's do from when you first heard from the seller to um, closing. How long oh man. It? First heard from him to closing. It's probably four weeks. Uh, or to closing to no, sell it. Sell, to, yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So the rehab probably Who's took your contract. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I first heard from him four weeks, closed on it, and then probably about two six weeks maybe for the rehab. And then I think we were getting we accepted an offer about after about a week uh, on the market. So, so oh, like one week. week. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> so four weeks to close and then about six weeks to finish and another week. So seven weeks, four, eleven, like th- three months. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Mm-hmm. And yeah. what, what projects did you have going on on top of this one? What other projects? Um, I was just, I had a, just some wholesales and then we're working on another one in the Havelock area that uh, my wife and I are actually going to move into. And then there's just another one we have under contract on her on that area if you don't mind sharing are you doing anything uh crazy right now with the way you're living are you doing any house hacking or anything no or? so we were living in our house and then uh so we have a house in, in lincoln so we were living here and then as we get started getting these properties my wife found one that she liked better so we're like okay we're gonna live in that one so we actually move in, moved out of that one to start renting it out right away and so we're living with our grandparents until we fix our house up. So when that one's finished, so we're living with our grandparents. It's actually saving quite a bit of money. And then while we while we fix that one up, should be done here within the next couple that's of really, months. That's really great um, to hear because I think there's a there's a, a point to be made there where sometimes you have to sacrifice things in the short term because like like you said, you know, you're, it's not ideal. You're new, it's still newlyweds mm-hmm. living with your grandparents. Like, yeah, you know, that's not ideal, obviously. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Um, but you guys are sacrificing that, you know, right now for like down the road. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I've got a a niece who just moved back from, I think Maryland is where they were living in and her, her uh, husband had just finished his um, commitment to the Marines. And I was just like trying to just pound it into their heads. Like, guys, you gotta, you know, he can use the VA loan. So you guys gotta just use that and get a fourplex house hack right you're just going to change the whole trajectory of your life and i mean for as much as i want that i found it in you know they it's just not their thing they're not yeah. really into investing or anything like that so for me it was a little frustrating because i'm like god oh, you guys don't know the opportunity you yeah because like two things for me that i regret with real estate investing one is not starting earlier mm-hmm. and two is not house hacking when i did get started and so mm-hmm. um i think you know having that ability it just changes everything, yeah. but you have to make some sacrifices. Yeah. So, yeah. And especially when, you know, when you have kids and stuff, it gets a little bit you know, it's way harder, harder mm-hmm. but, um, I, I, I think that's awesome. And well, I think it's great too, that your wife is on board. Yeah. You know? yeah like yeah. how many wives would be like, Oh yeah, we're just going to like, no. yeah. 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 She's awesome. She loves this, this type of stuff too. So, and it, the house that you're going to be moving to, uh, I'm assuming you're walking into equity mm-hmm. since you're f- fixing it and stuff. Uh, yeah. That's another thing I love. If you could, to anybody out there listening that maybe is trying to get into real estate. And I mean, I would say that would be a, a great way to get into it is by buying something that you're mm-hmm. going to move into yourself, whether it is just a single home or if it is a duplex or a fourplex, like you said, um, if you could touch on that for anybody listening out there, how important that is to walk in into with some equity, mm-hmm. you're, uh, what I've learned, um, I think it was DJ Envy that said it, uh, you know, whatever he does, whether it's buying cars or real estate, even his own house, he just bought a mansion a few months ago um, that needed work, you mm-hmm. know, and, and I don't know. I, I don't know the exact numbers, but let's say he bought it for a million dollars. Well, it needed half a million of work and now it's worth three million. Yeah. And, you know, he talks about the importance of that, that uh, he saw all these nicer mansions that he could have afforded but knowing the real estate stuff that he does. So if you can touch on that a little bit of how, how important that is. And if you, did you do that consciously when, when you purchased this? Yeah. So actually the plan with this one was just a whole tail, but then when plans changed, um, yeah, we're going to have some equity into it. Purchase price is one thirty. Um, we'll probably put about 30 into it and it'll, it'll be worth around 200. Um, so not a whole lot, but, uh, 
better than mine yeah. at 200. <laughs> oh yeah. Like, so we, before I got into all this real estate stuff, we bought our house on the market like a year and a half ago and we paid the normal. You know, yeah. I would never pay that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And so now learning this, I'm like, oh man, I sh- we should have just started with this, but um, yeah, it's like they say, like when you once you see sausage being made, yeah. like, you know, like, like that's what they do. Yeah, I'm like, what? <laughs> can, we edit, can we edit that part? <laughs> no, it's okay. Right? You once, you that. Sausage, you once you see sausage, you never go back. Once you see how sausage, you can never say all that. <laughs> but no, it's true. It's like once you see how that process works, you're just like, damn, I did that wrong. Like I totally paid a lot more when I could have put a little yeah. bit of work into mm-hmm. it. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's definitely. Uh, uh, power in having you look, ner- you look nervous everybody. are you thinking about sausage <laughs> though? <laughs> <laughs> all right so after talking about everything up to sausage and everything no, <laughs> um what what what's next for you then uh what, what's your main focus uh be, besides the stuff that you've talked about what what's like and especially right now uh this episode will probably be our last one for this year right uh it's december mm, already we'll two. we might have another one Maybe. so and since it's december either way uh with you know it's the end of the year like what are some of the goals that you got coming for 2022 yeah. i mean you could you yeah. got the world on your hand now yeah, i mean yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh so next year my goal is 40 deals so i'm i'm gonna focus on like wholesaling a lot and only do the flips that are like 15 20 grand and under um so yeah, those, those so are wholesaling is your main thing. Yeah. What about long term? Like, what is it, what are your long term goals? Uh, I want to have quite a quite a bit of rentals. So I just I also want to grow the the wholesaling and the flipping business to be like a, a business to where I can step away. So I want that to be like a machine and and so and then have just rentals throughout Lincoln and throughout Nebraska as well. So so out grow outside mm-hmm. of Lincoln for sure. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome, man. I love it, love it, love it. Um, and at the end of our show, we always ask uh, a couple of questions at the end. Um, so I'll start with the first one. Uh, and I mean, you're so young. This, this, mm-hmm. question, this question might not even apply to you. Yeah, okay. <laughs> but to, to leave our listeners 12. with some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, to leave our listeners with some wisdom. Um, if you were to look back at your younger self, what would be something that uh, you would tell yourself some advice? Yeah. Um, just don't let fear hold you back. So like I said, I, I started learning about wholesaling when I was 17, but I didn't take any action. Uh, so imagine if I started back then, what I could have done by now. So a year ago, because <laughs> <laughs> no, you're 20, it, 20, I love it. 21. Yeah. Right. I don't but, think we ever even went over his age. Yeah. Thought, yeah. yeah. No, that, that's yeah. The, it, love it, man. And and that's one thing we do. I always say this. We give you roses, give you man, roses. while you're, while you're, <laughs> while you're here. Cause, uh, it, and it's crazy. Like the growth, I mean, and what is that then two years? I mean, three years, you've, <laughs> you're killing it already. Like, yeah. um, but the next question that I have for you, if, uh, there's a three step, uh, process to success, what are the three steps? Okay. So I'd say first you need to have a goal and have a vision. Uh, cause if you don't know where you're going, you're not going to get there. So I'd say number one, have a vision in, in your goal. Uh, number two, uh, have a, a written down process of how you're going to reach that goal. Um, so the steps you need to take to get to that goal. And then number three, I'd say just have the discipline to uh, wake up every day, look at your process of the things that you have to do to reach that end goal and wake up every single day and do those things. Um, so that'd be love it, man. Love it. Love it. And uh, the last question that I have for you, if you were to write a book, what would be the title of the book and the theme of it? Uh, It'd probably be around the word optimism. I really like that word, and uh, I think I'm very optimistic and in the things that I do. Uh, so it'd probably be something to do with the word optimism, and then to call it probably some like the optimistic investor or the optimistic entrepreneur or something like that. You give it some thought already. I can definitely tell you. You heard it first here at the Minority Report podcast. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, Dan has a couple questions that we ask our guests too. Um, So with what you have going on right now, is there anything that our audience can bring to you that's a value for what you have going on? Like, are you looking for like, you're probably looking like for an assistant by now. Uh, no. uh, a couple months. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> just a couple months. Not right now. Just two months. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, well, I'm really just trying to meet new people, I guess, because uh, I know relationships are a big part. So if anyone just wants to, to meet, I'd say, um, 
let's get coffee or something. So, and then how can people, uh, like contact you? Yeah. So probably Instagram or, or Facebook would be best. So Instagram, it's just Tucker opinion, uh, no spaces, no caps. And then Facebook just Tucker's pretty, not, not a common name. So you should be able to find me on I think there. Pinion's not right. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Both. Uh, yeah. P I N Y E N. If anyone's uh, wondering. Yeah. See, I, I was thinking I, so yeah, that, that's great, man. Well, this has been awesome. Man. Yeah. Thank yeah. No, thanks, yeah. thanks for having us here, man. Actually, uh, I feel like we need to like set a calendar reminder and like halfway through 2022 like, See, what's this guy up to yeah, yeah. I'd, I'd be interested in seeing what you're that doing. sounds I, I like a plan to me yeah. let's, let's, let's do that at, he'll he'll be at 40 deals then like the 40 deals that he wants to do <laughs> yeah he'll be on bigger he'll be hosting bigger pockets <laughs> yeah for real <laughs> <It's Brandon's going. laughs> um but everybody out there listening make sure you guys uh check out our we're we're everywhere uh check out the that minority report podcast on instagram and then the Minority Report podcast on YouTube. Make sure you guys subscribe. We j- we're doing it big, man. We just hit over a hundred <laughs> subscribers. <laughs> 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 one Killing me. <laughs> no, uh, awesome, no we're we're like at one hundred four. That's awesome. Like one hundred four, yeah, yeah, one hundred five. I mean, yeah, so you know, make sure you guys subscribe. Yeah, subscribe, like, com- comment. We don't get comments. Yeah, like, yeah get true. Com- even if like it's bad comments of like yeah. his chin strap <laughs> or his accent or his backwards hat. Let let I us know, know what you guys <laughs> think of him th- about sausage and okay, all that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it. My hand to please don't segregate. You dress in a suit, I can't relate. Minority report, can't ignore. Be rich or poor, and your credit score. My hand to please don't segregate. You dress in a suit, I can't relate. Minority report, can't ignore. Be rich or poor, and your credit score. See, hold on.